Conversation is getting very interesting as we head down to the uh, the real thin part of this wire. Unfortunately, if Odium lose this game uh, outside of regulation, Man LFO are all but sure. The to make very it. thin part of this wire. You didn't, didn't like that one? Can't say I've heard that from you before. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I'm not going to be honest. I could have said anything and I would I think he's trying to say it's going right down to the wire. Thank you very much, And Michael. that it's it's so far down there that it's very thin. Think, yeah, think about like right. a frayed wire. And like it's, like if you ever, you know, like ripped apart like an Ethernet cable. Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. How many have you ripped? I'll tell you what. Oh, a lot. Uh, this team, though, is probably going to win this game. <clears throat> You'd hope so. You would really hope so. This team coming into this Good team. have looked the best, in my opinion. Man LFO are obviously ahead of them by one point, but Odium have definitely shown that they've got the grit, determination, and interest to make this a second-place finish. They got a point off, the only point off of Team Bliss this stage that anyone has been able to achieve, and Guz... Do we think that they will finish second? This is a big, big game for them. Well, unfortunately, they have made things a little bit more challenging for themselves. They did have that 5-7 loss against Antic last playday. Killer Man able to farm them a little bit over on Consulate, and they just struggled to at least clutch a point in overtime, which would have made the discussion tonight for them a little bit more comfortable. But against Carlton's Knights, they should, again, be going in. Full expectation to win, do it cleanly, get three points. It will then be out of their hands, depending on the man LFO game, but they'll put themselves in the best position they can from this point in time. Well, Kelton's Knights is who they go up against, and in the last play day, Kelton's Knights did indeed upset Panic in a 7-3 victory, which meant that Panic were, well, now they're fighting for the top six spot. If they had won that, they would have been locked into playoffs. So things now get more interesting, and we see Vinny once again reprise his role as the god and saviour of this team. Yeah, somehow. I actually don't know, because statistically he isn't, but when he's inside of the server, they're more successful. The only win they've had is because of him, and that's a 100% strike rate uh, strike rate in my book. So, uh, look, I think he just is the kind of player that instills confidence. He makes everyone around him better, uh, even if the stats maybe don't say that he is performing to the level of Josh and Worthy. Um, you know, I, I think that it speaks volumes to, to what he can bring to the team. So you're telling me he's digital 2.0? I, I would, would say me? he is digital 2.0 right now, which honestly, at this point in his career, that's fine. For Pat, it's been a, a rough stage. I hate to say it. Yeah. Whereas last year, he was incredible. So Flying. He was flying. Flying high. Flying Pat. <laughs> and Bouncing has been, well, bouncing all over the place. Hey, 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 hey. MVP last week, started round one. That's why I'm saying he's been, he's been bouncing all over the place because he was not MVP no, the he first wasn't. five weeks. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's crazy how quick... Things can change, Michael. Looking forward. I guess you could say bounced in the opposite direction. <laughs> could have bounced in the other direction. Potentially, they might bounce Odium out of second place. This is a dangerous game for Odium because you cannot underestimate what Kelton's Knights brings to the server, both individually and as a team. When they're on, they are seriously on. But Guz, it just really that switch has not been flicked enough this stage. Yeah, I'm looking at that attack and defense win rate. It's actually quite intriguing, especially for the side um, of Odium. 61% on attack would be by far and away ahead the rest of the pack, so that's a really positive number. Then drag down to 48% defensively. That's well below the standard that they should be setting for themselves, and I'm sure is set by the rest of the league. And Carlton's Knights, uh, on, on the flip side, 23%. Not very good on attack, but at least their defensive start is strong. So I don't know exactly which side they'll be starting on. We'll get an eye on that for the, when the veto comes. We don't even know the map. But <laughs> well, it's not even map-specific. It's start no. side-specific for me. If Carlton's Knights are defense first, Odium could find themselves in some strife. But again, they do have a good attacking win rate, so it should balance. I guess the maps could play a part if you're looking at Odium. Maybe are they playing a whole heap of your clubhouses and your Oregons on your super defender sided maps? If not, then that could explain why they're a little bit better on the attack. Are they playing more open maps, as I like to say, organic? Uh, and I, th <laughs> I think that could be the reason why they're able to reach the numbers they've reached. I think irregardless of that, though, their defensive win rate is, is clearly something that's strange. Mm -hmm. They've been so successful this strange in a defender side of meta, their defense would have to be on the, the lower end of this league, despite being a team challenging and, and looking to arguably be in that second place. For Carlton's Knights, uh, defense looks good. Attack, well, that speaks volumes. It certainly does. Uh, one thing that we always talk about is individual performances. Sometimes it can change on a dime. Saved has had an unbelievable stage, whereas Josh is the highest rated performer on Carlton's Knights and still not above 
the average 100 EPS guns. Yeah, again, probably a reflection of some of the struggles that Carlton's Knights have experienced throughout today. Um, Saved has been a phenomenal performer, especially on that entry. 21% is quite a high share. Continues to play that Yana, ARX, ACOG build. Will lurk around the map, try and find and exploit weakness in the defense. I will say, I don't know how successful the lurk is going to be necessarily against Carlton, depending on how off-site they want to play and how fluid they want to interpret the map. It could be a case in which they just bunk it down and, you know, play default for playing denial. I don't know. Again, probably will be dependent on that map. Speaking of maps, where do you think we're going? Well, I'm going to say Chalet. Yeah? I haven't seen, haven't looked. I'm taking a complete guess that I'm wrong. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> to be fair, that's Carlton's banning it out. And and also, to be fair, it's the second most it's gonna be club. It'd be club. League, It'd so. be club, clubhouse, I think. No, okay. no. Well, <laughs> well, then it will be Oregon. Well, <laughs> then it will be Oregon. Uh, will it be Oregon, will it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will be. Okay. Uh, uh, it was a 50-50 between club and Oregon yeah. for me, so I got a bit unfortunate. Yeah. So the uh, the El Clasico, Odium start on attack. Good or bad, guys? I think it's bad. <laughs> You're not Guz. <laughs> but you can continue your point. I, I, <laughs> I'm I not going to stop be. you. I'm not going to stop be. you. No, you go. No, I'm you're, definitely you're Guz. Guz. You're not. You are Guz. <laughs> I'm Jake from Jake and Guz. So, I mean, that's close. <laughs> I'm enough. Rob from the Robin I think Cone. that Cafe Skyscraper Club as the bands for Odium leads me to believe that the Oregon pick might not be exactly the kind of map that they want. Really super defender-sided. I don't know if it's statistically the most defender sided in this league. It probably be isn't. Biased. But it would have well, it's to only be. been played once. So really? <laughs> only played once? Yeah. 86% oh, in that instance. That's criminal. Yeah, 86%. Right. Perfect subsample there. But <laughs> we'll, we'll go with it. And, sure. and <laughs> it's, it, would, it would be up there with one of the highest defenses uh, yeah. in no, possible. But the bands are uh, interesting. When you look at the, the fact that they've banned maps that have similar tendencies to Oregon, yet then we go to Oregon. It doesn't strike me with a whole heap of confidence, and we haven't really seen it. You're trying to very quickly go through and see yeah. where that Oregon it's game It's going to take me a moment. It's going to take him a moment. Have we, we, don't a moment? Have, we don't, we don't have, have a moment. Forget it. Let's just go over to Devin Mendy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just so we can confirm this, who's hosting the show? I just Do you know who's hosting the show? Um, I'm not sure who's hosting the show because it looked like Jake might have been hosting the show. I would have to agree with you. Yeah, Jake, um, if you want to come in and jump on and take my job as well, feel free. That's fine. Maybe you can cast with Mandy. Would you want to cast with Jake? No, yeah. you don't want to cast with I'm Jake. I'm good. Thanks, though. How it's about we just cast this game? Yeah. What about Odium versus Kelton's Knights? Um, That should be an exciting one, it should. I think. Yeah. Odium have not gone to bank. It's true. They've learned good. from the mistakes of Panicky. Sports, which I'm proud of them for. And instead, they've gone to Oregon. Now, Hooray. arguably, this could still be a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a mistake. But I don't think it's, it's as big a mistake as going to bank. Yes. Well, of course, Kelton's Knights had a great bank last week against Panic. It was the first and only win that they've had in this tournament thus far. And it's funny, having a look at what is realistically the second best team in the region going up against the bottom team on the standings, you'd think that the community vote split would be a little bit more biased towards Odium, but Kelton's Knights, to their credit, they've still got a lot of favoritism from the community, and I guess if you want to spin it this way, Odium have actually lost their last two matches. Team Bliss, obviously they got a point, which are the only ones to have done so. Great 6-8 there. Uh, but then they lost to Antic last week as well. So Odium, while they have appeared to be the second best team in the region, certainly not a done deal as of yet. This is the chance to make sure that they can climb open mammoth. Oh, sorry, not mammoth. Man what are they called now? Man, man e-sports. E e That's the opposite of, like, it's like a beast and now I've gone man. Yeah. Is that like a point? Uh, yeah. uh, for second place here. So Every time I think about mammoth and man, I just think about Ice Age. I love that movie. Have I you just seen, think about the... Have you the, seen Ice Age? Yeah, I have seen Ice Age. Yeah. I'm just surprised that you didn't, like, respond with the same nostalgia, like, oh, that I do. I, I, every time I think of that... So yeah, so our producer just said it reminds him of Sid, which is funny because Sid is the sloth, not okay. the mammoth. The mammoth's name is Manny, which is kind of ironic because he's not a man, he's a mammoth. Okay. But my favourite character is Diego, the same tooth tiger. So I'll be honest, I've watched a stage and I don't remember. I need a new duo. This is, so I can't accept so this. I, I have my my fatal flaw. Yeah, I've got many fatal flaws oh, in life. Yeah, but okay. one of my fatal flaws is that I'm not very cultured with this whole... Mm nostalgic movies and pop right. culture and stuff. You gotta watch I Ice Age. I only watched SpongeBob this year. 
I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Who'd be watching SpongeBob in 2024, Mandy? I'm not kidding. I'd never seen it before. <laughs> and and I kept getting extensively SpongeBob memes. And I was like, I don't <laughs> like I don't understand. But oh. yeah, so yeah, you yeah, can't okay. really count on me to be the nostalgic person in this scenario. Okay, I'm so. gonna see how many Ice Age references I can fit into this cast, and you're gonna sit there and not get any of them. Is that yeah, what you're telling me? That's exactly correct. Yeah, that is exactly how it's gonna be. That is devastating. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not even Man Esports anyway. No, okay, it's maybe I'll <laughs> save it for one of the, the other games. No, we're not casting the Man Esports <laughs> game. It's now or never done. Okay, do. in that case, how about we just cast this bloody game and do the best job that we can and give maximum respect to these teams? Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. We'll try that. We'll try. Yeah. We'll give it a shot. I can't guarantee it, but I'll give it a try. Yeah, you know us. We're very respectful casts. Uh, respect. Yeah, say that without okay. laughing next time, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm still laughing Five about the last <laughs> <laughs> Kicking it off on defense, Kelton's Knights, the big guys who have won a single match thus far in the league. And maybe they could find a second one here. They are on the most favored bomb site in the game. Something that Fresh hit me with a fun fact yesterday. He said, Oregon Basement, the most defender sided bomb site in the game. So if they can't win here... I'm just saying, I don't have to be a stats man to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but if I say, oh, Fresh said it, then it, it carries weight. It adds weight. credibility yeah, to Yeah, exactly. It. Sure, fair enough. Okay. He's worthy in the top four. So round clears on for Odium. Holding on to area kids for a little bit longer. Saved is going to look to try and take that engagement, but won't line the shots, and that's going to allow Worthy a path out, potentially, in through Attic. Not getting too aggressive as of yet for Odium, which is good. Still Worthy is holding onto his position. He's been droned many times. Another one goes back. They've actually watched his cutoff here. Or apparently not well enough, it seems. I thought that Bappen was watching, but no. Now Worthy has been afforded the ability to fall on back. This has been uncharacteristically Ooh. passive from Odium. However, Quixie and Worthy do directly trade. Okay. So the Rome Clear is still on here for Odium. They've only cleared uh -oh. one position here on the ground floor. Oh, and now they've cleared two. Nice entry from Bappen. And Dick Kitchen well timed off the back of the info of the player rotating in through security, perhaps overstaying their welcome. Oh, Pat is still on the top floor. I mean, inside a tower. I think they know. There has to be a drone here. Oh, no, there isn't. Surely Saved is going to check this at this at this point. We saw... No, maybe they won't. I mean, there's no rotation in tower. So they Surely can't... He checks really have known that he's still on the top floor. I think Pat could be on here. Oh, they haven't droned up tier two. Yeah, this is dangerous. Meanwhile, Vinny does get a nice aggressive C4. Is Saved going to be cautious? No, he's... Okay, he is a little bit. I don't think he knows. He's just checking. He'll try and sound cue to watch his flank. Oh! Bouncing oh, balls! Oh, that's just bad <laughs> flanked himself up through Z and found another pick. This has been pretty poor <laughs> from <laughs> Odium. <laughs> Thankfully, dun, 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 he's run away. Dun, 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 dun. He's gone all the way to blue. Bounce and Pat doesn't say... Oh, no, he hasn't. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Jaws theme was very apt. And seeking beneath the surface, Pat does find his pick. There's a nice one for Bouncing to close. Kelton's Knights, very solid defense. Yeah, they want a defense for the basement. How Hooray. exciting. Um, that's about it, really. <laughs> Uh, Odium struggling a little bit on the roam clear. Yeah, they did manage to pick up Worthy eventually, but it was a direct trade. Yes, Bappen got this refrag here, and so as well onto Josh to try and pull things their way, but not being able to clear out Bouncing somehow inside a Z, who didn't ever really seem to leave the ground floor. Did make things a bit tricky for Odium, and then Pat coming in on his flank as well just made things even worse. So, yeah, Odium, I felt like, never really had full control of that round. Kelton's might win it out. They basically never had any control of that round. Very slow, uncharacteristically slow, and uh, a bit lax from Odium, really allowing those flanks to go down. I want to point out the Solus, though. I think that Bouncing did a really good job of finding a lot of those drones in the prep phase. When we were having a bit of a yarn about Ice Age, he managed to find a drone that was hidden very well in Small Tower. So quite a lot of drones taken out early, and Vinny's looking to do the same here. He's just taken out, I believe that was Quixie's drone. I like this bit of an extension, bit of a threat over here in Small Tower as well. Clash. Interesting. Very interesting. I also I didn't know that Clash has got a shield and a shield. 
Yes. I actually did not know that at well, all. Also a shield and a shield and a shotgun, by the a way. A shield like, and a shield Pat, and a shotgun. Pat does not have any ranged weaponry, not even a pistol. Yeah. He could have gone for the SMG, but he's gone for the shoddy. That's very unusual. I don't think I've ever seen that. This is a bit of a meme lineup from Pat. Ah, oh, it, it could either be real meme or super genius. I think it's them. I think it's the latter. Knowing Pat, he's, Ooh, he's a smart egg. C falls out for worthy. Oh, okay. Dirty thinks that's a bit dangerous. He doesn't do it. That's fair enough. Where is that? Oh, you mean the bottom of tower? He was going to mm. go for that. Nice. Well, that's a cheeky one. I wonder what kind of an attack Odium are going to settle for here. We actually haven't seen Odium play. Oregon before, not since back in the campaign with the previous Odium roster. They did win that game against the old Mammoth roster, but so far ago and uh, such a different roster, you really can't take much oh, out a second. In. Dirty has gone straight on inside. He oh. spots out one player, Josh caught with his pants down. A big kill from Dirty as he oh, can start plenty. to force his diffuser down. Uh -oh. What a peculiar round. Uh -oh. Worthy doesn't have the info. And as the plant goes down, he will make a blind C4 attempt. It finds nothing. And now a retake is called upon for Kelton's Knights. Vinny might be able to come around the corner. It's a shield on Ooh. shield action. <laughs> How can Pat make this one work? Bit of damage done, but not enough as of yet. The Clash might be able to make this work oh a little God, bit, though. Ridiculous. Flanking, but no, the Monty's going to ring around the Rosie and taking down oh, the Clash. No. Oh, it's beautiful from Quixie. Finding a double, looking for a third. Nothing as of yet, but Bouncing is done for. Odium on the back of that Amaru rush. Dominate on the top floor. That was such a strange round. Oh, my. It's all gone horribly wrong for Kelton tonight. They had such a good defense in the basement. And then they went up to kids, and uh, Odium was like, Good from here on out. Yeah. yeah, Amaru seemed to be the right piece of the puzzle, I, I just, guess. Dirty, I, they didn't expect it. Yeah. He was straight on in. They had no idea where he was planning. Round was over. Retake, not so good. Josh really could have killed him there. Though. Like, I don't know. Was I think Josh he was flashed? Was he? Yeah. Did they flash from the double window, maybe? Let's have a look at this. I don't. He didn't look flashed. Yeah, I saw a Candela's go out, but he didn't look hmm. flashed. Very weird stuff. Very interesting. So I never occurred to me, but um, obviously Clash is typically a Montane counter, but can Monty knock Clash over with his knife like he does everybody I else? I mean, it looks like it. I don't know if maybe that was because Clash didn't have the shield up properly yet, but if you can knock a Clash over even when she's got her shield up, then... Are we, are we allowed to ask for a replay of the Quixie kill? Or is that too much to ask? From no, can we do that? Nut, can you hear me on the uh, on the replays? Can we get a replay or another replay of the Montaigne no uh, knifing the Clash or going for the, the knockdown on the Clash? Okay, we have confirmation. We are going to get a replay and we can solve our query. Amazing. Let's ha let's have a look in a, in a minute, whenever that gets ready. Okay, nevertheless, Kelton's Knights have decided to do a repeat of the same bomb site all the way up the top. So, Odium uh, looking for a slightly different solution this time around. Actually, it looks like their lineup is exactly the same. I take that back completely. This time around, though, Finn has gone into the Oryx, which could be a peculiar solution to this Monty problem. I like it. Creative. Second. It doesn't really seem to matter, though. He's not on the side of the map with the Monty. Well, the Monty's taking a little bit of damage. I'm not sure where that happened. He seems to be outside lobby at the minute. Quite a peculiar setup outside from Odium, making his way up the stairs. There is a player on for his flank here. Quixie in a bit of an awkward spot, pushing up. Oh, he run, actually Pat, wants run. to threaten to try and push back some of these defenders. And as they do fall back, he's in a pretty good spot, taking a yeah. lot of ground. Yeah, right. So Pat's decided he's sick of having the clash and he actually wants a real gun. Uh, so he's gone into Malusi instead, which I think could be a good idea. Not only that, but Impacts are a thing that exists in this game as well that can deal with Monty too. So, oh, this is interesting. Dirty is on a drone at the moment, and he, he looks postured again. for the exact same execute as the previous round. And the guy in Kids is actually on his drone right now. This is very awkward. Okay, Josh is back up. Bappen has the opening pick from the bottom of White Stairs, but this needs to be timed right from Odium. Quixie making his way on inside. The good flashes come on through. Oh, a missed opportunity for saved. Is Josh still up or is Josh flashed? Dirty gets flashed, in fact, and immediately Prez is starting to go for this plant. Josh cornered and taken on oh down with again. the shoddy. Good coverage from Odium as Bappen comes up the white stairs. All on Pat now. And he gets taken down as well by Dirty. Beautiful 
Second iteration of the same kind of attack from Odium back to back and it works a treat. Oh, so Kelton's not, it's not quite able to solve the same problems as we saw about... Oh, here we go. Yeah. Right. So does he get the so shield back up before he gets knocked over? That's what I want to know. I don't reckon it was technically equipped uh... yet. So if, I personally haven't tested if you can knock over a, a clash with the Monty. Um, when the Clash is fully extended, but I'm going to guess that it's because Clash wasn't fully extended yet. Are you okay? What do you mean, are you okay? What are they talking about? I think Attack it's nice to, to just ask sometimes. Yeah, fair enough. Reload. That's what I usually say when people ask if I'm okay. <laughs> I just hit them uh, with the XD. Okay, I'll not pry into that conversation any longer. Alas, Felt Knights, having lost the top floor twice, are now going to go back down into the basement because it's been unlocked for them once again. Very and good. last time around, that Odium attacks this bomb site. It was a bit rough around the edges, hey? They lost out on the wrong clear. Then Pat came in for a backstab, and it was kind of all over pretty quickly. So, hopefully this time around for Odium, they got it. Yeah. That being said, though, if you are playing Oregon, you should be winning your basements. And ideally, you should be winning quite a few of your dorms defenses as well. Bit of a red flag that uh, Kelton's Knights struggled with both of those so far. But to Odium's credit, they had a nice set piece both times. Looked pretty well dry run, pretty well organized. Oh, I like this. That's very ambitious from Kelton as he gets back to site. I think this aggression on the defense is a good idea from Kelton's Knights. They seem to make it work pretty well on the last basement defense. And Odium, to be honest, despite being a team full of like real gunners and forward think thinking players, like they've actually been very slow and methodical. So I think... The thought here for Kelton's Knights is we interviewed Vinny last week, right? And Vinny said, essentially, they've cut themselves more loose, right? They've given themselves more slack in the way that they play the game because they were trying to play a game of really structured siege, but not practicing off to actually make that style siege work, right? So I think letting loose some of these players, like like Bouncing Balls, yeah. like Vin, like Worthy on this row, is probably the right idea, 100%. to be honest. And I think they've got it this time around, and that's probably why they're finding a bit more confidence in these early rounds, right? So I think this is good from them. That has delayed quite a significant bit of time as well for Odium, uh, only just making the entry in through Armory. The rest of the players of Kelton's Knights look like they've backed on out all the way into the ground floor or into the basement. So, so far, so good. Um, I would say both teams is pretty even situation here, except for potentially a player still on the top floor. Oh, yeah. This okay. is cheeky. This is very cheeky. And I like the way that Worthy was on the stairs there to shoot drones and, and kind of bait these attackers in. Bounce it. Oh, he is spotted, uh -oh. I believe, on that drone. He might be able to take a drone out. No, he doesn't want to risk his life by going for the shot. But he gets back to site safely, which is good. Odium have cleared the map, but there's still a lot of items on that checklist. Both of these hatches still reinforced and electrified. Right, so what do they do from here? They're going to use a baby EMP to clear the cage. Raj, get the hatch open. Nice. Oh, they're going to have to time this right, because the, the electrical can come back online before um. the Xkyros detonate. No? OK. They must have just got it on in time. I think it's the secondary hard reach charge, right? Is it? Okay. I can't remember which one's slow. Well, Hibana is pretty slow. Yeah. I think um, you could be right, actually. I don't know. I think I'm I wrong. think, you know, if you wait too long before detonating the Hibanas, then, yeah, you're going to lose that. Sensor twinks. I concur. Okay. Uh, Prez instead is going to try and make these lines of sights clear up position inside of Shiko, and it's going to work, it seems like. Unless the can shoot them off, but nevertheless, the B is going to prevent that from happening as well, so... So far, so good for Odium. Oh, no, not so good. There's only 20 seconds left. Hey, Kelton's Knight should pick this one up. Yeah, but Saved has found the opening kill. A good C4 from Worthy, but it does mean there's no C4 for the plant denial. Might not matter in the end because Odium have gone deep. It's all up to Pat now. But guess what? He's in pole position to deny this plant coming down the hatch. Dirty, lucky to have stolen that kill. Otherwise, Pat could have denied the plant and won the round on time. Odium just get that one away. That's big red flags for me for Kelton's Knights. Not only have they lost two of the top floor in a row now on the defense, but they now have gone and lost a basement to mm. honestly what was a pretty standard attack from Odium. Clear the map, open open E, go for a back take. Like pretty standard. Yeah. You know? And what's a shame is like for Kelton's Knights, this game actually they cannot affect their standings. Like they can't even go to seventh. They are dead last, eighth place. They can't even boost themselves up by one spot because the next team, Circular Spheres and Six Targets, um, 
Uh, oh, actually, the Circular Sphere is not anymore, but six targets is four points ahead of them. And they can obviously only get a maximum of three from this game. So a lot that needs to be done for Kelton's Knights moving into next stage to have a better go of it. But here, like this game, can't have much of an impact from them. All they can do is play spoils for Odium. Well, I think then the story is more about Odium here, right? Like this is their opportunity to dagger. surmount themselves into second place, assuming yeah. that maybe 6T go and grab some rounds of uh, Man Esports a little later on tonight, yeah, right? So yeah, well, on that, like all Odium need here, like they get the full regulation win, then Man Esports need a regulation win off of six targets. Otherwise, Odium retain that second place. And I would not be surprised if 6T can steal uh, a few points away from that. I think this is important for Odium, performance-wise, leading into the best of three setting. I think at this stage of the group stage, especially with them just literally just around the corner tomorrow, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah it's important for these guys to be in form. You know, you know, changing, changing that kind of stuff overnight is pretty tough, right? So I, I'm one I'm more judging in this final play day, especially for some of these more low-stakes games, is like a general feel for the team. And also map pool Going for into me. tomorrow. Like, this yeah. is a new map for Odium. So if, if this is good, then it's really going to give them a huge advantage in those BO3 sure. vetoes. Yeah, it's really important. And I think, like, to me, for the rest of this game, I'm sort of writing this one off pretty hard. I think for Kelton's Knights, they've looked pretty weak, I would say, so far in the series. I'm more turning towards how efficient and clean Odium look. Okay. Run out. Bro, going. Whoa. Okay, Kelton has decided to go for an excursion, and instead what that's allowed Worthy to go and claim a pick onto Bappen, who's in the wrong way to take that fight. Oh, what's going on here? A rush the into the basement? Rush? There's no one here. Well, oh, Vinny nice. says, actually, I am home and I'm not keen for you to start moving on in. Here's a big C4 opportunity, but it doesn't quite land as of yet. Now this reinforcement here on Elbow makes things very awkward. Qu Quixie doesn't have the diffuser. He's in a plant spot, but a 2v5 makes things very awkward. Prez finds one. But Quixie is absolutely caught. Like, there's nothing he can do except bait for Prez, maybe. Nope. Prez is down. 1v2, and it's not going to happen there. Kelton's Knights get their defense locked in on the back of quite a risky rush attempt from Odium. Ah, I spoke too soon. That you did. I did. I spoke too soon. Um, and yeah, Kelton's Knights, great roam there. Extended throughout the entire, uh, entire map, all three floors. Odium tried to punish that by jumping their way straight onto the bomb site. And he was there to meet them, called it out. The rest of them collapsed back in on the bomb site. Very good roam and punishing Odium for cutting corners. Yeah, very much so. I still like the idea from yeah, Odium to go for that rush. Like, I don't blame them for thinking, oh, this is free, moving into sight. But, yeah, the devil is in the details, as they say. And Kelton's nice. Hey, they could go 3 3 here on Oregon. That wouldn't be. Horrible. It wouldn't be ideal. It wouldn't be horrible either. They could still play spoils for Odium. Yeah, and Odium, like we said, like they need three points out of this. Two points, and they technically go ahead of Man, but uh, then if Man get any points, I mean, if Man get even an overtime win, then they will still steal second away from Odium. So a lot of chance here for Kelton's Knights to throw a real spanner in the works for what many believe, I think even Bliss believe that Odium are the second best team in this region right now. Attackers it's just all but proven. Quixie's jumping off the Monty as well onto the Ram for this round, which is an interesting addition to a tertiary bomb site for Kelton's Knights. Now, I like that Kelton's Knights have realized that they're not very good at the top floor no. and are instead going to try one of the ground floor instead. The final defense round. Quixie's been pretty sharp this entire stage and Bloody is going to try and look to claim an entry onto the Roma in the top floor. Not quite able to land the shots onto Worthy on the other side. It's pretty lethal in the alibi so far. Saved on entry. ACOG on the Finker. Very nice. Oh, perfect for these long lines of sight, but Pat's got him through a wall bang. Very nice shot there. Man advantage, Keltons. Dirty's going to look for the cross as well onto Worthy, who I think is still sitting here in the top floor and should be able to get away with his life here. The kitchen hatch being open will give him the escape route that he needs, but it doesn't look like he wants to do it straight away. Okay, now he will. Oh. Ah, spotted out. And Chow Hallway as well is bouncing, so Dirty can get that as a free pick. Yeah, very risky there from bouncing. Bit ill advised. I wasn't a huge fan of that play. Not necessary in a moment like that 
Interesting to use the ram just to make a rotation into pit. I mean, that's not realistically going to tear up any floor. Poised to try and make something work on this entry is Bappen. But for now, not a huge amount of progress made by Odium. Of course, this is the kitchen bomb site. Oh, oh, watch out, Prez. The ram does come and open up a very strong line of sight, completely mincing up that kitchen flooring. Still no flank watch as of yet for anyone coming up the freezer stairs, and that enables Worthy to make this one happen. Vinny, meanwhile, has also re-aggressed in the small tower. Worthy has a chance at confirming this round. He was spotted on a drone, but Prez hyper-cautious of that position. Quixie really feeling that pressure up above. Nice shot there from Quixie. The way the Odium get back in this round is by isolating ones. And so that other defender drops back to site. Here's Prez looking for the backstab in through lobby and Quixie as well uh, is going to look to make his entry. He's taken uh -oh. down low and finished off Pat to claim the final kill and the final round of the half of the Kelton's Knights. And that does mean that we settle it at a 3-3 giving Kelton's something to fight for not in bad. this second half. Not too bad. Not bad. Far from ideal, for sure. Yeah, like You want to be gunning for those four, particularly because, as you said, like the nature of how those rounds were shaping up, Odium can't be too upset with this game so far. Like They have played, by far and away, the better Siege. And I think if they take the Siege they're playing right now into playoffs, they will likely go quite far. Hmm. Not bad, not great for both teams, mm. I think. Yeah, Odium, they look all right, I think. They don't look as confident, I think, is the thing that I'm, yeah. I'm going at here, right? They're like thrown maybe, off by these plays, yeah. like the, the aggression from Kelton's. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking Kelton's like with this new loose era that they're in. You know, it's... cheeky weeky. I think it is exposing a little bit of weakness in the Odium early game. That makes me a little bit worried. But it's, I don't think it's something that can't be fixed, I think. It kind of looks like Oregon's a bit new to the map, though, to be honest. Like, I don't yeah. I don't want to read into it, like, too hard, but... Yeah. I do. You know me. There, I want to read into everything. There are some much. stuff that they're able to achieve on other maps that look really well drilled, Five and this map doesn't look like one of them. Now, if this is one of their less drilled yeah, maps, and then they're going to go take Kilton's Knights to it, like, I think that's, that's fairly fair enough, to be honest. You want to test the waters. Well, but, um, speaking yeah, of that, like, just to continue theory crafting, there's only one game so far that Odium haven't banned Oregon, and that was against Team Bliss. Yeah. Against every other team, they banned Oregon. So this is actually one of their lowest preference maps. And yet, they let it go through against Kelton. Is Odium just like feeling out Oregon here? I think so. Because they don't really care. Because they could be like going really hard in this game to confirm second seed. Or they could just let this one go, pump the brakes a little bit, foot off the gas, and just chill out, and then like really shore up that map pool going into playoffs. I would have to agree with that theory personally. Maybe just the way that they like postured themselves in the server at the moment, but they don't look as confident on this map as they do the rest of their pool. Nevertheless, uh, without reading into it any more than that, Vin uh, on the entry is going to claim the first onto that on the room clear. Now they have come down to the basement, but it is a full extension of the map, similar to what Kelton's Knights were doing on their defending half. Ooh, players just going down laundry stairs there. The Kelton's Knights. Sage is in a good spot. Pat's tempted to make something happen. E1D locks his defenders in place. Wow. Look at how deep Pat's got, but he's taken down. The Diffuser is in the middle of sights. And there's not a lot to do about it. Kelton's thankfully can bring the numbers back. As I say that, Dirty makes it a little bit awkward. Sage has got to reload at some point. Not enough bullets in the Roni there. He goes down to Vinny. It costs Kelton's Knights a lot of HP, and of course the Diffuser still on the ground in the middle of the objective, meaning that they realistically have got to go for kills and got to go to retake this site, which is going to be very difficult with where these Odium players are situated. Oh, Prez could be in a bit of a dangerous spot here. I think the closet's pretty safe, but I mean, if this peak, peak comes through from Freezer at the right time with whatever Vin is trying to do here, that could be a bit dangerous. Okay, never mind. They're going to play straight into the mirror. I take it back completely. Yeah, Dirty should be good here. Oh, Ooh. the nade, though, might have enabled that position. Oh, oh. oh no. Bounce and Vin needed to watch That's the cross back, nade. but a nade That's and a, a pre-fire is beautiful from Vinny. President 1v2. Oh, he's got the down. I think he knows. He might have heard the body drop. And now it's a 1v1. President holds down the fort for Odium. A sketchy round, but one that Odium get in the bag as they take the lead once again. 
Yeah, really back and forth that last round was. Kelton's Knights try to capitalize on the site being mostly vacated. And they almost did that. They got the defuse in the middle of the bomb sat, and they even brought it down back to a two versus one in the 2v2, which I thought was a perfect use of the grenade in that situation as well. Great utility sunk. Um, but yeah, Prez being able to land the two versus one, both plays pretty low after the early engagements as well, does narrowly close that one out for Odium. I just want to double down on that nade thing. Like, I know it's so simple, Defending but like, nades have really gone out of fashion since you can't cook them anymore. But good teams know how to use them to displace players, and that's exactly yeah. what happened. Like, it was the Lion who had nades, the one in Freezer. He had to throw it all the way through his line of sight in the Freezer wall, through the line of sight in the closet wall, bank it off. By that point, Vinny really has to run, right? He's not going to be able to tank that nade. Oh, sorry, not Vinny, the defender, whoever the defender was, mm -hmm. had to tank that nade or run. And Vinny just pre-fires, and as he runs out, he walks straight into his crossfire. So that's actually some nice fundamental team play from Kelton's Knights. Nevertheless, they did not win the round. No, but that's Very because they got 1v2 yeah. because President's a gamer. Yep, he did game in that last round. He, not he bad. knows how to do that, I've noticed. You think so? Well, we've talked a little bit about this. President's actually having a pretty banging stage. Yeah, unironically, like, yeah. He's, like. he's the guy that cops a lot of flack because he's usually like on the less fragging roles on his teams. But man, this dude's been holding his own. Dude is certainly doing it in 2024 somehow. Maybe it's just the right team, honestly. Or maybe yeah. he's just like found his people. <laughs> These are the dudes. Anyway, here goes Josh on the entry on Ash. Give Josh the Ash license. I quite like I it. And give Bouncin. <laughs> <Kelton. laughs> Why did Vinny say? Vinny said the other week that Kelton said, look, guys, I'm going to just pick Blackbeard and play how I want. And they were like, okay, we'll just let Kelton do what he wants. Oh, oh what a that's nice. fire. Very nice. And yeah, I, I think this might be the secret. Hey, oh, okay. We were oh, saying no. this is the good This is the good news for Bouncin. He's totally gone not. Minced. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, Unlucky. <laughs> that's funny. I still love the fact that this team has a dynamic where Bouncing's like, hey guys, uh, I'm building a team. By the way, I'm not going to play in it for a whole year. Oh, by the way, guys, in 2024, I'm now going to play for the team again, but I'm only going to play Blackbeard. <laughs> I just, I love that dynamic. Now, really nice shot there from Dirty. Fortunately, Pat was able to get a breach on the wall, but losing that fight is going to be pretty punishing. Oh, Worthy, flanked up by Bappen. He's pretty ecstatic about that one. Two versus four. Kelton's Knights not in the best of ways. Okay, this is not great, hey? A minute and 30 left on the clock uh, is time to work with, but there's not much that you can do from this situation, really. I mean, Josh is in trophy. Could punish someone if they go for the overpeak. Oh, I think Vinny's nice. just managed to claim that, actually, onto Dirty, who oh. looks like he's overpeaking. Oh, oh. oh, Press as well, sticking his foot out from the breach after Dirty's just died. That's not great positioning, hey? Josh is about to get swung big from Bappen. He's feeling good about this one, but it's a mirror. He's going to worry about both these players could line up, but Bappen swings it. A big one from him. Odium seriously running away with this game. Yeah, really solid defense there from Odium on the top floor. Despite Josh finding the early pick, I think they held on well. Especially Dirty on the breach. He really stunted a lot of what Kelton Knights were trying to achieve over and towards the master side of the map. And really, there wasn't that much control for Gelt's Knights. They never really pivoted their focus at all, whether it was towards double window, trying to get attic or anything like that. It was pretty linear, like claustrophobic attack. And uh, yeah, Odium shut that down pretty easily. Can I just say, in that pick phase, Bouncing just insta-locked Ash. It was the first one with an operator, and he just insta-locked <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I just love this. I love the team dynamic. I know it's quite sad, really, seeing what's happened with uh, Kelton's Knights. Recently, um, this year, uh, just last year, they could put in very little effort and farm uh, and almost make a major spot, even get points off of Bliss, beat Bliss in stage two last year. Very different situation now. I love the kind of narrative, though, that we were talking about where Kelton's Knights actually decided to start trying, like start scrimming, start dry running, start playing methodical. Um, and it didn't work for them. It's almost ironic. Like the, the harder they try, the more they think about it, it doesn't work. But that, I think, tells you a lot about Siege. Obviously, you have to try, but sometimes the, your mental game is actually going to perform better if you just chill out a little bit. And I think these guys were so fundamentally good that once they did that, they were one of the top teams in the region. But it also speaks to how competitive OS is getting with teams like Odium really stepping their game up. Mm. I think it's a combination of both things, right? Like, I think what Vin said was pretty telling that I think Kelts Knights know what they've done wrong here, right? And that's just 
They know how to play Rainbow Six and they try to add more detail to it, but you can only work on the details if you sink the time into it. And that's not something they were willing to do, right? So you, you need to set the expectation on your brand of gameplay to match the, the amount of effort that you're yeah, going to put into it. Right. And I think Kelton's Knights probably misjudged that, which is like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of teams on your like first building strategies and stuff like fall into that a lot. Like especially like amateur teams in 2-2, 2-2, right? So like, We're going to yeah. be G2. It's but you don't have the time. But you don't have the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't have the knowledge. It's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's a hard balance to find where you want to create a brand of Siege that's achievable for you. And a lot of the time, that's kind of like not what the top team's doing, right? It's it's like, you know, that that's always the boon of playing at like amateur Rainbow Six, in my opinion. Ne nevertheless, this is Pro League, so you probably shouldn't be talking about <laughs> grassroots, but... I mean, this is a, a league with an open qualifier, and um, both of these teams qualified through it, so... It mm. does bear some weight. Yeah, but I think the other, the flip side to that story is, you know, your teams like like Odium, like you putting it out, they have like really turned it up this stage and learned mm. a lot of new things about the game. They look they look like a real team, and that's the scary thing about OS is that everyone has pushed their way up to the top slowly but surely. They've taken a step a little bit closer. Is worthy in for the entry right in the middle of lobby, and is trying to look to catch off one of these players of Odium on the defense. Place this player seems to be saved all the way on the bottom of flight stairs. Uh oh. He's going to claim one. Oh, no, he's not. His crosshair was on Josh's head, but Josh clicked faster and saved it gone. Yeah, good read there from Josh. I think he had info, but he was pretending that he didn't know. Not lighting up the drone. Prez on site, or close enough, in a good position. Quixie feeling that pressure as he's trying to hold on to the top floor. Kelton's Knights are not interested in addressing this top floor, it seems, as they have an execute here already on meeting. Now, Quixie taking down the Attic player, forces them off the plant for now. Pat's not sure where he's going to play. But Odium don't have a ton of options here. How do they recompose? Big entry from Bouncin. Quixie needs to reply, but Worthy's there with the long angle. It took Kelton's a few rounds, but they do nail down an attack. Solid one as well for Kelton's Knights. I think just playing the game really slow, like taking your time to actually drone out all the holes in the defense, like what rooms are vacated to them, go and take that straight away, and then try and capitalize off the back of their Like being in lobby, like being in classroom, that's a real good point to try and cut off some of the rotations coming out from the, the stray roamers. Did you write this on my computer, by the way? Someone's come and written cringe in my I notepad. I did not. I did not. <laughs> I wonder who that was. Was that any of our observers? Attackers need to did you write cringe on my notepad? No? Denying. It is good being in studio, isn't it? You can <laughs> 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 who wrote cringe on my notepad while I was in the out here in person. It's good. <laughs> Sorry for that distraction there from the game. <laughs> Back to the game for a second, and yeah, I mean, nice that Kelton's eventually get a round win. And it was nice that it was pretty decisive. Like, they yeah. knew what they wanted to do, they just nailed down meeting control, and, and they looked to really ramp up that pressure. Yeah, definitely really solid there for Kelton's Knights. I think playing the slow game's the right call there to try and pick it apart, don't rush into anything, especially when Odium are doing something pretty ambitious. Like, you know, the, the map hold that they did was pretty spread out, and yeah, being able to find some stray roamers was, was the right play, I think, for Kelton's Knights. Especially when you've got like kind of crazy entries, right? I mean, if you look at the lineup in theory on paper, you've got like Josh, who's been absolutely phenomenal in the last year, second highest rated player of 2023. Yeah. And then you've also got, you know, like Worthy, arguably the MVP of the region for an entire like year and a half. And you've got, I mean, can you really say Bouncing? Actually, Bouncing's nah. not amazing right nah, now. Not anymore. But like, you know, on paper, you've got some pretty good firepower, right? So, yeah. yeah. And just on that, like oh. Josh. Oh, oh, Josh. There we go. He's found a big kill. And yeah, speaking of Josh, like this guy's managed to go positive on his rating and on his kills, despite only having won a single match out of the six that they've played so far. And that tells you a lot about like the, the talent of this guy. Even when they're losing, he's, uh, he's still supporting his team. Oh, big opportunity here goes begging for Vinny. You want to talk about players with impact. Vinny's hit double digits. Kelton, unfortunately, does fall. Bappen running amok on this Rome game. A oh, cut off. Yeah, the That's dangerous. doesn't work for them, though. He's been so aggressive here, Bappen, but now he can just continue wasting time. I wonder if his teammate's going to come help him out in this scenario, because he's essentially stuck inside of Shower now. Okay, so saves is around the floor. Oh! Ah, that's a bit of an, of an overzealous pick. He had the info. He saw him on the scanner that he yeah. was droning, so he got a little bit ambitious there. Saved is still holding on. I just love that Odium, like, keep this pressure up, even though they are a player down. In this scenario, it's kind of hard to call what the right thing to do for a save because 
You can fall off to the basement. And arguably that's fine, even in the numbers disadvantage because the basement is rather strong. Oh, oh gosh, on its own, in its architecture. But also staying here and trying to find a pick could also be good for the man disadvantage. So yeah, I think Save's just gonna play the safe pick instead and go uh, go back into the bomb site. Probably the right call. Meanwhile though, with a minute left on the clock, that's actually plenty, plenty of time here for Kelton's Knights if they wanna start to pick apart the basement. My concern is that there's not a lot of util to clear these mirror windows. There's one Selma and the Hibana, and that's all you've got. No Ash, and the Twitch is all out of drones, having lost both of them at the freezer stairs earlier. Odium are playing quite smart right now. They know that if they just wait, the time will tick down, and they might be gifted opportunities to even up the bank out. Now, I think you've spoken about it correctly here. The main thing they've got to face here now is trying to deal with oh this no. mirror. That's a pretty dangerous way to go for the peak there as well. And the so Breeze Charge doesn't even land on the wall as well, the Selma Charge, rather, from Vin, because uh -oh. of that Wamai well, Charge. Uh-oh! I think Hell's Knights have made the wrong call here. Yeah, they were in a 4v3, and yet this is how it pans out. Bit scary now. Big swing for saved. He finds a nice little headshot there, and this has been a bit of a cruisy game for Odium as they find themselves on match point. Mm. Peculiar choice of execute. McKellen's nice. Stop feeding the mirror. Peculiar. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind it. Like, they wanted to sink the smoke to go block off the mirror to then throw the Selma charge in to kill the mirror. You know, I understand. The Wamai, the, though. Like, there I were understand. a lot of magnets there. Yes. Made it a bit awkward. The thoughts were there. The execution was not there. They missed. They miscalculated, I think. Yeah. Having the Wamai discs really kept this mirror alive, which kept President's power position alive. Save took the one versus one that he landed, and they had no idea. Well, they did have an idea, sort of. That quick see was there, but he's pretty sharp. So, yeah. Solid defense from the remaining three players of Odium. They all took an individual one versus one, and they won them all. Very sharp players, Odium. Now they've got their first point on the scoreboard from tonight. Now that does lend itself to their campaign. They are now tied on points with Man Esports. And because Odium actually have a better uh, round difference. That means Odium are now in second place in this league. In fact, really, no matter what happens in this game, Odium will Jackson still be second place in this league at the end of this match. However, there is an opportunity for Antic or for Man to overtake Odium. And that means they need to lock in the full three points. If they lock in three points here, then there's just about no way, or there is no way that Antic can overtake them. But Man Esports will still have an opportunity to do that when they play six targets in our final match of the night. So Odium need to lock this in right here for their best chance at getting a bye in the playoffs and skipping the play day tomorrow. Josh has been pretty good since jumping onto the attack half on the Amaru. We'll see what he can do early on in the round. Opening up onto satellite, doesn't find anyone there with the spawn peak. It is top floor, the bomb site for Odium and potentially the final round. Oh no, it's not. I've got that completely wrong once again. It storms. It, it storms. is. Oh, it is? Yeah, it storms. 110%. It storms. 110%? 110%. Okay. You know, I believe in you. It I don't storms. believe in me. I've got horrible eyesight. Ah. It storms. Yes, you are correct. Okay. Saved over here is protecting Quixie on the other side uh, of Attic, preventing the early entry to come through and making sure we can hold onto the wall for a bit longer. But it doesn't really seem like that's what Kelton's Knights want to go for here. The pressure is much more heavily focused on Master as Pat has made his way on into Closet. We'll open up the wall pretty easily. Nothing on the other side to prevent that from happening. Oh, the impact trick misses as well. A bit unfortunate for Odium. Kind of need to land those, but... Regardless, Kelton's Knights have a solid position now. Bulletproof camera in position as well. Inny doesn't land the shot he wants against Quixie there. Now, what are the choices here for Kelton's Knights? How are they going to look to execute this? They could maybe sneak in off the back of some of the Candelas. Vin is in a pretty good spot to be able to roll those into the right power positions. I think if they plan this out well, they could definitely make an entry. Now, the question here for me is when those Candelas do ring out, do they go for the plan? Or do they go deep and make an entry? That is the question that I've posed here for Kelts Knights to try and claim this round. Ooh. Nade is a nice idea, but the Wamai catches it and saved. He's gone down to Josh on this entry down below on the Amaru. And Feeney has actually gone deep and lost his life for his trouble. Dirty having a big impact. Still not addressed. He finds every kill. Odium breathes through Kelton's Knights and rocket up the standings. They're back, baby, back where they belong. Second place in Oceania. Really solid showing on Oregon as well. 
I really liked that they were willing to go and try out some new stuff and expand their map pool, especially leading into the BA3s. They look like they're in pretty solid form, especially taking Celts Knights down in regulation. That's right. Even Oda said in the interview after Odium took a point off of Bliss that these guys are looking like the second best team in the region. Whether they can stay there remains to be seen. And I'm sure that the guys on the desk will break that down. Breaking it down indeed is what we do here. Whether it's good or bad, we well and truly keep it we keep it respectable sometimes. But most times not. No, most times unfortunately not. We do stray from the uh what what would be known as the normal path and we head down the beaten path a lot of the times. But unfortunately for Kelton's Knights, they strayed off from the beaten path onto the beaten path, I should say, in Play day one, and they have not recovered since. No, they haven't. Look, not a bad effort. Seeing them play worse throughout the stage at one point. Vinny, th uh, seven and three, had a 1v1 against President. Fell short in that. Had he won that, I would have started to believe a little bit. And from that point onwards, though, it was uh, far too comfortable for Odeon. They got the win. They got the three points, deservedly so. Would have been a, a bit of a shock, honestly, heading into the playoffs had they lost this game. But Carlton's Knights, I mean, it's always a tricky one. They had technically nothing to play for. Yeah. Couldn't get out of the bottom two. They did also show enough that maybe they could still be around come next stage. I think, look, I, the, the conversation about Carlton's Knights is very unfortunate for uh, stage one because really their history over 2023 was pretty... I would say it was pretty dominant for the most part. Like, there were a lot of games that they really did push a lot of teams on. But they just haven't been able to get it done. Odium, on the other hand, guys, do they now remain in that... I mean, yes, they remain in second seed, um, for obviously. Now. For now. Uh, but, I mean, is that is that where you place them? Um... Honestly, I think truth. I think to be truthful, this is the kind of matchup where it's kind of difficult to, at the conclusion of it, take too much away from it. Being Carlton's Knights, um, I think they were confident enough throughout this game and got a good enough result across the line where it doesn't really change the narrative all too much. If they get seeded in second in second spot, ultimately, I think for the playoffs contention, it does put them in really good stead if they're able to uh, avoid Bliss ultimately until that grand final. Although we won't know where they're going to be seeded until those other games complete. So I don't really think that this match changes the complexion of their standing all too much or you know the trajectory on which they're on. They went in. The expectation was a regulation win. They achieved that. Could it have been a bit more dominant? I mean, maybe, but doesn't really matter. Much of a muchness. Let's go ahead and speak to, I believe it was President. Let's hope it is by the time they bring him in. Prez, always great to see you, my Howdy. friends. Uh, look, Guz has kind of made the point there that I'm sure you were listening. It, this doesn't change the conversation in any way for us. And, you know, it's neither good nor bad. It's the victory that we all expected uh, and the way in which we expected you to do it. It looked convincing. Did it feel convincing in the server? Um, I actually, it's funny you say that. I actually said after the game, it didn't even feel like a pro league game. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a weird one, but you know, we, we just played our game really and got the win. I think we definitely could have, uh, won a bit more decisively. Um, but yeah, happy with the three points and hopefully it locks us in for second. All right, press. I got three questions here. They're all pretty <laughs> short, so don't, don't fret too much. Number one, do you know who Paul is? Cause we're trying to figure it out. Uh, yes, but uh, I cannot disclose that information. Oh, okay, <laughs> I see where this is going. It's going to drag on. We'll figure it out in stage two. Yeah, funny joke. All right, uh, number two, what did you think of uh, Antics Choke earlier? I'm sure you were watching. Um, I don't know. Time for another disband, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jeez. Well, you, uh, he, he said Maybe it. Another rebuild he said it, not me. Go. He said it. I didn't say it. Uh, and the last one is actually, now that you guys are done with group stage, congratulations. We don't know where you're going to finish yet. I imagine you'll watch the games later tonight. But uh, heading into the playoffs, what's the um, expectations for you guys as a roster? Best of threes now. Of course, you guys, as this team, this iteration, haven't been together enough to play a lot of best of threes. What's the expectations heading into the playoffs? Um, expectations for us is definitely top two. Um, I think the games we lost, we didn't really lose to the other team being better. It was really just us making some silly mistakes, which is going to happen with such a new roster. Like we had this call five a week before the stage started. So, um, it'll just come down to making sure we prep well. I mean, our map pool's not the greatest because we barely had any prep. Um, so yeah, we've just got to really knuckle down the scrims and I think if we get our map pool right and we get our vetoes right, we can we can really take it to the likes of Bliss and, and Man. Yeah, I guess just following on from that quickly, how confident are you guys in that potential Bliss matchup? Depending on seeding, I think it's almost confirmed that you guys will avoid them till the potential grand final. 
they're such a good team. They're so difficult to take down. As you mentioned, you guys lack experience. Is there a world in which you can win that game if the stars actually align? Of course there is. <laughs> of course there is. No, we're, we're pretty confident going up against Bliss. Um, obviously, they're, they're an amazing team. I mean, they've showed it for the past two years. Um, I think the way we've kind of set up our play style really counters how they play. So if we lock in on the day and we, we play our game, I think we'll, we'll give them a real run for their money. I think you'll give them a run for their money regardless. Now, uh, one thing we spoke about... Uh, and this was last week, I'm just going to extend this interview a little while longer, is the president alumni. We actually went through and found all the players that you used to play with and have played with. Oh, it must be You've a lot. played with yeah, three bits of the Bliss roster. You've really? Played, yeah, and you've played with a number of big, big names, Josh included. I mean, I, yeah. I want to I hear it from your opinion. Have you made them who they are today? <laughs> yeah, shout out, Brendo. That's my son. Um, nah, Nah, look, I don't know. I just kind of picked them up from ranked and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say really. Like, yeah, I, like we were on a team with them like at the start of their careers and I don't know, I guess they just excelled from from that and yeah. Very very quickly before know. we do let you go, President, sorry to buddy in here, Rob, but you know, over I'd say at least uh, throughout a lot of 2023, you uh, you copped a lot of flack from people who shall not be named. You're having a great stage. You're probably <clears throat> logic in just about the best. I think the best form I've seen you in with maybe one of the best teams I've seen you win. Um, so I just wanted to, to say good job. Keep it up and best of luck in the playoffs. Appreciate it. We'll give it a real good shot. Right. We'll see you. Uh, well, I guess we might actually miss you this week and see you next week. Regardless, mate. Take care. Fingers crossed. Have a good one, guys. See you, mate. Well, uh, the big thing about this win that we haven't, I don't know if either of you have mentioned it yet, but with this win, they have 100% ensured that they will not be playing Bliss. Yeah, I was writing the numbers. Guys did mention that. Uh, Well, I was kind of teetering because I was trying to work it live, but yeah, they'll they'll lock in second or third, and both of those seeds avoid Bliss until the grand final. It's really now just down to whether or not they have to play that additional quarterfinal match. Um, in which case you're alluding to, maybe we won't speak to them tomorrow, but for all the right reasons. Yes, it's and and to be fair, you know, you're hearing it from President himself. They're feeling very confident. They're feeling very comfortable. And this is probably, I, I would agree with you, Jake. This is probably the best the rosters looked uh, with President, maybe ever. I, I think I would. I think it'd be fair to say maybe maybe since the Ground Zero days with uh, Kaken and Brendo oh, wow. and some of the biggest names we actually uh, have in the region. That, didn't that team like as stacked as it was? It didn't perform well. If no, I it got pulled apart. Right. So Brendo came in and then it just slowly, yeah. you know, it was like the fanatic effect. So people poached. just kept, people <laughs> yeah. just kept going for it. Everyone had a bit of a piece of it. Yeah. Look, and I think also what speaks volumes for the roster of Odium is that they're all pretty well-rounded. There's not like one or two that really go ahead and, and super hard carry. Um, President has stepped up as well. Yep. Um, you know, we kind of softly mentioned there, but he has copped quite a lot from a lot. Not a lot of people, issues. not just logic. Yeah. Um, and I think that maybe a lot of it was warranted throughout 2023, but he's come back, put the work in. He's got a good team. He doesn't have to overdo anything. And look, as a roster, I think Odium can certainly be that team that challenges for second. Yep. Unfortunately, it's just the league we're in. We're never going to be sitting here saying that they can win it or they can beat Bliss. But maybe they could if, you know, I win the lottery. That's the world we'd have to be in. But I think there's a team that can certainly yeah, be that second best. Well, the thing is, coming into tonight, there was only four points that separated second all the way down to seventh. But things are going to drastically change as they are on the desk. It's time for us to go to a short break. When we come back, Dev and Mandy will join me for some true professionalism.